what's inside my head that fills me with this doubt. I don't trust the things that come out of my mouth. Never trust the things that come out of my mouth. What do you expect from me? Thank you guys so much for coming in. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. All right, uh, so I guess let's, let's start at the very beginning. How did Olipo come to be? Um, I think it initially started out of some uh, home recordings I was kind of doing and uh, slowly added everybody else into the equation. And um, now it's more of a full band thing. Mm -hmm. Did you have kind of an idea of where you wanted to take that from the, the beginning, or did it just evolve? It's changed a lot. Um, early on, it was a lot of um, mostly acoustic stuff, and um, gotten a lot more into like loops and just rhythms and cool stuff like that. Do you have uh, any particular inspirations uh, for the sound, or is it? Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, I don't know. You guys want to name some bands we like? I don't know. Um, I think, like, as far as older musicians go, I think all of us t touch on Talking Heads a lot in our playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we love Talking Heads. 
in terms of like the loops and stuff i'd say stuff like just like an energetic revolutionary band is always going to be influential especially like, like that band in the 70s just had it all yeah. <laughs> or like more recently a band like um caribou or somebody yeah, like that who they're really one of our kind of blends favorites. live instrumentation with like some pre-recorded elements that's something we've really taken inspiration from having it be like dancey but also be organic. kind of like a rock organic. band still and like jay dilla and like hip-hop stuff with like loops a lot of that stuff's really inspiring yeah just pretty much blending electronic sounds with like a traditional rock band setting almost now uh the keys are kind of a recent addition right yeah tell, uh, tell us about that well um i uh most of the uh in the more beginning uh, parts of the band i i, I would be pl- I was playing bass guitar a lot, um, and I've always kind of like had the keys as an additional part to the bass guitar. But um, right now, I've I've had a finger limitation to recent injury, and so I've kind of moved solely to using keys until I'm fully healed with my hand. I was expecting you know a traditional like key sound, but yeah, I mean, you got you're playing you're basically playing bass. Yeah, really I'm playing key. bass synth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, so you guys are about to release your uh, the first debut ep right mm-hmm. yeah. in a couple um, days actually we have a release show on saturday dig up tapes is putting it out those guys are really great and been super helpful um yeah saturday. It, is it going to be uh i know they they favor cassettes are you guys releasing it on cassette or is it cd vinyl? Uh, it's, it's cassette but it comes with a download code you yeah. can go online download it the tape's pretty much just like a vehicle like a, just something like, physical yeah. you can have with like the artwork the track list because no one really has a tape player anymore unless you have an old car <laughs> but you're <laughs> you're gonna get a download code so hopefully like just a little, just a little artifact yeah just something you can hold in your hands as so, opposed to so was that kind of the idea behind the cassette was to just be a vehicle for the yeah. it's a it's a cheap physical product that people can buy at shows that's actually like you know something you can hold in your hand yeah um, what uh? How would you describe like that really lo-fi kind of almost dirty sound that's on the cassette versus what somebody might find on the digital download? Um, like how's that? Does the EP really differ from one one format to the other? You know, I've only listened to it on tape once, and it wasn't on great. Most have tape players. It wasn't on great <laughs> quality speakers. It. Um, but I mean, it definitely did sound it sound more lo-fi. But I think it's just a different experience. You know, I mean. I think there's something to be said for that specific yeah, aesthetic. I, I think it's interesting, like, hearing something pretty new sounding with a lot of, like, sampled and electronic components on, like, an old format, like a tape. I'm sure that's not really heard before. I, I honestly haven't heard it on the tape yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that'd be just a strange combination. Hopefully people will just listen to both, get both experiences, and yeah. kind of pick and choose what they want to do. So beyond the CP, what's next for Olipo? Um, I mean, just keep playing some shows. Uh, we're starting to work on new material. That song that we just played actually uh, yeah, is not that's on actually, the that's not on the EP, that's a new song. The rest of them will be from the EP, but mm-hmm. that's what we've been working on. It's about almost done. So we're looking at some new recordings and stuff. I don't know when they're coming or what, how they're going to be released or anything. But I know we've loosely talked about trying to get a full length together at some point, but... It's just it's just hard to get everyone together to compose, and I know we're all trying to move in like a specific direction, but hopefully we'll get some tracks together. Yeah. And uh, real quick, or as quickly as the question warrants, can you explain what Olipo is? is yes. Let Frank, Frank field that um, one. <laughs> Olipo uh, was is the name of a, a a French poetry movement in which you put constraints on poetry in order to kind of expose um, a specific idea. It's like limiting yourself artistically so that you can kind of flourish within those constraints. And I think that says a lot about how his process has been um, so with songwriting, because he uses uh, very, very unorthodox um, uh, recording techniques. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all just about working within limitations and using that as a way to kind of flourish. Yeah, and the one, a limitation for us is we're all, during the school year, we're all like, hours apart from each other. Ryan's up at App. Frank and I are at Asheville. Mm-hmm. And these guys are in Raleigh still. So it's hard to, I mean, that's a limitation. Even like Ryan's recording process can be a limitation sometimes recording on a video camera. I mean, it has a nice like external microphone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still, it's still a weird method. For so sure. wait, did you, you recorded the album on a video camera? It's like, I went to film school for a year 
and I didn't really dig it. I ended up transferring to App State. Um, but yeah, so I have like some video equipment, and I recorded most of the audio through a shotgun microphone attached to my camcorder, and I actually usually edit it in like Final Cut Pro or like Soundtrack Pro. So it's kind of film related software, but it has a lot of like audio interface stuff. So I mean, it works pretty well. I mean. I found it.
Bell. Bye.